the cost of renewable energy is astronomical. Now, FT have a sort of cost breakdown because Ed Miliband's buying this, scrutinizing Ed Miliband and Keir Starmer's plans. And they say the terms at which it will invest, Labour, is unclear, but it could provide, could include majority stakes in some cases. It will absorb Great British Nuclear, the company set up by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, to help revise Britain's nuclear power fleet. Exact same problems that I just outlined with the government swallowing up all of the ownership and costs involved in setting up nuclear power stations, rather than the companies that actually have an incentive to invest and then benefit from selling cheap energy and exporting energy to our neighbours, like France does through undersea cables. So... Stupid. Terrible idea. Meanwhile, 3.3 billion of its planned 8.3 billion funding over the first parliament, so it's not just 5 billion a year, it's got extra costs involved in there, will be used to fund local authorities and provide low interest loans to communities for projects such as solar panels on roofs and shared ownership wind projects. So looking at investing multiple billions in solar and wind every year, and we'll be looking into how those underperform very shortly. So, recent modelling by Aurora Energy Research found Labour's 2030 goal would actually require 116 billion in renewables investment over the next 11 years. So they're not even going to meet the 2030 target, compared with 104.6 billion under the slower Conservative plan. But are either of those figures true, though? Only 100 billion on each side. If you want to hit net zero by 2050, or even 2030, are you only going to be spending 100 billion? Not true. And the people that know that are the Labour Party. So recently there was a leak. This is from Darren Jones, who's the chief shadow, uh, chief secretary to the Treasury in Keir Starmer's shadow cabinet. And he said that $28 billion a year, originally allocated to Labour's green investment plan, which was then cut to the $5 billion, was just a tiny amount. And he said the fact that Keir Starmer had downgraded the investment plans from 28 to $4.7 billion made it sound as if we basically junked the whole thing, but we definitely haven't. So... They know the real numbers. Why aren't they being honest about it? Well, who has looked at the real numbers? Turns out the national grid. So this was an article from Bloomberg. And if you see the, the title here, it says, UK energy sector only has to spend 7% more to hit net zero goal. Well, that's a lie. Because if you look at the archive, the original headline was net zero emissions to cost the UK sector $4 trillion. They're covering for the fact that it's going to be an exorbitant cost to go to net zero and also not work. And this is according to far-right conspiracy outlet, The National Grid. So the ESO, they modelled their future energy scenarios in 2020. So that was 10 years out from Labour's deadline of 2030, 30 years out from the Conservatives' deadline of 2050, which was written into law by Chris Skidmore. And I was on a panel with Chris Skidmore in 2021 at Conservative Party Conference, and people asked, OK, well, how did you go about enacting net zero by 2050? And he said, oh, I just change the date on the law. And I I looked at him like he didn't cost it. And again, he looked like I'd just run over his dog with a car. And he's since resigned and said he's voting, I think, for the Lib Dems in protest because Rishi Sunak set the net zero target back by five years to stop everyone from scrapping their gas boiler or their petrol car to 2035. Oh, how reactionary, Rishi. Five years deadline on not impoverishing the British people. Brilliant. Fantastic. You could just scrap the whole thing because it doesn't bloody work. But there you go. So they said they, they had multiple options. The three options were the consumer transformation and system transformation option, where net zero was hit by 2050, costing 3.02 trillion. Leading the way, where net zero was hit by 2048, costing 2.8 trillion. Or steady progression, where the deadline was missed, costing 2.93 trillion. So it's all going to be around 3 trillion pounds to hit any of the net zero targets. All these models also make leaps of logic in their assumptions to keep costs down, such as within the leading the way scenario, slightly cheaper one, there are a third fewer cars on the road by 2050 than the steady progression scenario thanks to many homes opting to have one or no car in the last five years of the period. That will result in 20 million cars as opposed to the 33 million cars, and this alone leads to a 27 billion annual cost reduction. Now, this is despite the government's own report into electric car adoption, predicting more people using electric cars because if they get renewable energy, it will be cheaper and they'll be mass-produced, and because, of course, they'll be self-driving. So you won't even have to properly drive in order to actually use the car. So there'll be more congestion on the roads, more demand for cars, more demand for minerals, more demand for electricity. So the report itself says it estimates the cost of congestion will be 78 billion over the next 50 years, higher than the previous predictions of 52 billion back in March 2023. 
So no, all of these assumptions that keep costs down are wrong, so it's going to be way higher than $3 trillion even. Even the most optimistic versions are completely incorrect. But don't worry, Bloomberg assures us there's only a 7% difference in the cost of the quickest and greenest pathway and the slowest trajectory where 2050 target is missed. Also, it's only 7% more to massively impoverish you at the most optimistic projection for a technology that doesn't bloody work. It's only 7% over the $3 trillion. These are the people running everything. It's It's delusional. It's, it's so worrying. Now, reminder, remember the NHS budget that everyone complains about? Quite rightly so, right? The NHS budget in 2022 to 2023 was $181.7 billion. So that's, what, five times the national religion in Britain? And then triple that. So 15 times. 15 times the national religion in Britain will be spent on the most optimistic scenario for net zero. 15 NHSs. For net zero. Now, they're not the only modelling to stumble on this three trillion number. The Global Warming Policy Foundation found this number. They put the overall cost of achieving net zero by 2050 at three trillion minimum. That's 1.4 trillion on a grid to be weaned off gas, presuming, and they, they themselves say, with wild optimism, that 58% of electricity generation could be replaced with consistent offshore wind farms. It can't. Four trillion to reduce the emissions of homes by 80% through insulation and replacing gas boilers. Though the authors of the paper also generously presume that market innovations will halve this cost to two trillion, so that's seventy thousand pounds per household. Every household will pay seventy thousand pounds for these retrofits by 2050. That's if all homes can even have this done. Lots of homes can't have cavity wall insulation or these heat pumps that freeze up over the winter and don't provide your house with any heat. They're just not fit for it. Most of the new builds aren't fit for it either because they've got new insulation that started rotting, so they have to all be retrofitted. It's a complete waste of time. And even the most optimistic scenario is modelled, where the home insulation is 0.9 trillion, decarbonising the transport is not included in this, so that exceeds 3 trillion as well. And of course, they want to increase the rate at which public transport is used because they want fewer cars and to make the transition off of gas-powered cars more seamless. So this is going to be way above 3 trillion. But, okay... What if this were achieved? What if this $3 trillion bill were hit? Well, for my policy paper that I was involved in, for the Adam Smith Institute, where I wrote to spec and, and tried to negotiate the government down off its lurch of throwing the economy off a cliff and net zero, I had also stumbled across the number of $3 trillion. But $3 trillion purely to revolutionise the grid to make it fully renewable. So that's $3 trillion, not for everything, $3 trillion just for the grid to make it fully renewable. And I did this with a nuclear engineer, by the way, so he knows his stuff. So the fact that we're all converging on the same sort of amount means that this is exorbitantly expensive. This is more than the GDP of the UK, right? The only thing they listened to was the nuclear funding mechanisms. Of course, the Conservative Party didn't listen to my recommendations on renewable energy. And the reason I made recommendations is because British consumers already subsidise the renewables industry with more than £11 billion every year. So it's £387 per household, per average household, is spent on renewables. That's why they keep bringing the cost of production down, because they're massively subsidised within your taxes that you don't get to see, but you're still paying. And according to my modelling, right, the current rate of generation, this was back in 2021, if energy production for the rate of renewables, which is 7.76 gigawatts at the time of writing, became the sole source for Britain's national grid, it would fall short of meeting existing average consumer demand by 30, which is 30 gigawatts, by 74.5%. And that's without mass electric cars, mass electrification of stoves and boilers and heat pumps and all this sort of stuff. So massive more amount of demand within the next, blimey, Labour want to do it in six years versus 2050 as well. So let's say 26 years. And even then, the renewable tech will not meet demand. The grid capacity, if it wanted to meet demand, would need to quadruple from 40 gigawatts to 154.6 gigawatts. And if wind and solar were to double their grid contributions, as current, the cost for consumers would, would increase by £10 every single megawatt hour. Now, that's not likely to happen, because the Financial Times recently reported 63% of the 4,000 applications submitted for wind, solar, and battery projects between 2018 and 2023 were refused, abandoned, or withdrawn, or had their planning permission expire. So we're not even bloody building the capacity, which isn't going to work anyway, which we need to do if we're going to meet demand, if we massively electrify everything and want to hit net zero. None of this is possible. Thank you for watching that clip from Tomlinson Talks. If you liked that and you would like to see more, you can get the full 90-minute show 
every week on a Wednesday afternoon, live from 3 p.m., only on lotuseaters.com and all of the other content that my colleagues produce behind the paywall for as little as £5 a month. Thank you very much for supporting us, and I hope to see you there. Until next time, goodbye.